I head for my in-law's house begrudgingly. This is because I have to go see the person I least want to see in this world. It's my mother-in-law of all people. She's a mother of someone I love, but I just don't like her. Perhaps sensing my failings, my daughter started to cry as soon as we arrived at my in-law's house. The more I tried to get her to stop crying, the louder her voice got as if she could sense my impatience. In that moment, I know why the baby's crying. My nephew, my brother-in-law's son suddenly said. Do you know why the baby's crying? When my brother-in-law casually asked, my nephew confidently answered. Yes, you see? The answer to my nephew's question that no one expected would later change my fate. My name is Willow, I am 29 years old. My husband Ken and I have been married for two years now and we get along every day. Since the beginning we were more like best friends than lovers. I feel comfortable and happy enough with Ken. But there's one person who doesn't like our relationship. That is my husband's mother. My mother-in-law didn't like me very much from the beginning of our marriage. She didn't tell me this directly, but every time I saw her she would give me a hard time. And she only harasses me when she's alone with me. She must love her youngest son Ken very much. Whenever I visit my mother-in-law's house and try to have a conversation with my husband in front of my mother-in-law, she gives me a cold stare. And as soon as we're alone, she would start complaining about it. I think it's very bad taste for your wife to be affectionate with your husband in front of me. I'm Ken's mother. I'm his blood family. So can a stranger like you not get in my way? I wish she would just divorce you. And so on and so forth, as if I was the bad guy throwing one heartless word after another. I was so shocked by these harsh words that I couldn't say anything bad. I had no idea that my mother-in-law hated me so much. What should I do? I want to have a good relationship with her, but this is not good at all. I had to make sure Ken never knew about this. In hindsight, I should have talked to my husband and distanced myself from my mother-in-law right away. But at the time, I was desperate to somehow be accepted as his wife. The real hell started after that. Six months into our marriage, my mother-in-law became obsessed with her grandchildren more than necessary. Willow, you know? I think our heir must be a boy. One day as soon as I showed up at my in-law's house, she suddenly said that to me. My husband and father-in-law who were there, including myself, froze. It was Ken who spoke up on my behalf. What's wrong with you, mom? You have been married for six months, right? It should be time to start having a baby. Don't talk to me like that. A child is a gift. It's not a given that you'll have a baby within six months of marriage, so... But with Kyle and his wife got pregnant right after they got married. That doesn't matter. We have our own pace. Mom, don't meddle too much. My mother-in-law is not amused by my husband's words. I deliberately pretended not to notice the occasional cold blare from my mother-in-law. Ken's brother Kyle got married five years ago. Shortly after that, his wife became pregnant and gave birth to a boy. My nephew, Billy, will be four years old soon. Billy loves to be around me and my husband, and I feel his growth every time I see him. And that's not all. Between you and me, Billy's words have saved my life many times. I think it all started when he was two and a half years old when he started to talk. When I was about to leave my in-law's house, Billy said to me, You know, Auntie, you should take a different road when you go home. Billy, what's wrong? The usual way is no good? It has to be a different road. Okay, okay, I'll take a different road today. Yeah, use a different road. My husband had been drinking at my in-law's house, so I couldn't ask him to drive, so I had to drive home. As I started to drive, Billy's words came back to me, so I drove home on a different road. The next day, the news reported that there had been a major accident on the original road I was supposed to take yesterday. When I saw it, I dropped the mug I was holding onto the floor without thinking. When I explained my conversation with Billy to my husband who came running to me, he said it was just a coincidence. After that, Billy often made comments that bothered me. He never displays any of his abilities in front of my husband or mother-in-law. Does he have magical powers? One day, I approached my brother-in-law Kyle about this. Excuse me Kyle, I'd like to talk to you about Billy. I didn't miss the moment when my brother-in-law's face scrunched up for a moment, 
He must have sensed something. He pulled my arm and moved from the living room to the hallway. Then he said in a quiet voice so that others could not hear. What's this about Billy? Well, maybe it's just a coincidence, but Billy saved my life a couple times. Billy saved you? Yes, I've been saved from accidents and a few other times. I was wondering if maybe Billy has some kind of special power. I see. So, you too? What do you mean? He usually only uses that power in front of me and my wife. But I guess he used it in front of you too. Apparently, Billy had shown that power to my brother-in-law and his wife several times. According to my brother-in-law, he never made such comments to anyone outside of the family, so he didn't care much about it. However, if this ability was revealed to the public, it would eventually become a big problem. In order to avoid such a situation, my brother-in-law and his wife were desperately trying to hide Billy's power. I was curious as to why Billy was using his power on me too. It's been almost a year since I found out about Billy's powers. I found out that I was pregnant a while ago, but I had been suffering from morning sickness and had not been able to visit my in-laws very often. I heard that my brother-in-law and his wife were coming back to visit them when we did. I was eager to see them, but at the same time, I was somewhat relieved that I wouldn't have to see my mother-in-law. In the last trimester of my pregnancy, morning sickness finally settled down. But on the other hand, my belly was getting bigger, so my daily life started to be a little bit difficult. I'm on maternity leave from work, but have a lot of things to prepare for. You never know when your child will be born. And when I went on maternity leave, my mother-in-law called me every day. Hello, Willow? Are you taking the supplements I sent you? Well, I'm taking folic acid supplements that I originally bought myself. That's not good enough. Take the ones I sent you. That's the expensive one I recommended on the mail order site. Even if you say that, listen here. You're a failed wife who couldn't conceive a boy, so at least give me a satisfactory child. Yes, the baby in my belly was a girl. To be frank, I don't care what sex it is. As long as the baby is born healthy, that's all that matters to me. But my mother-in-law wants to have it her way, right down to the gender. It was mentally demanding just to be put under such pressure. I told her that my baby was a girl. She was in an overly bad mood. After that, my mother-in-law's harassment escalated and she told me to take the supplements she had prepared for me. She also started sending me books on preparing for a second child. I hadn't even finished giving birth to my first child yet. She also called me every day and repeatedly called me with heartless abuse, telling me that I was a worthless wife, that she should never have allowed us to get married and that I should divorce her son after the baby was born. I was exhausted from the pregnancy and my mother-in-law's words were coming back to haunt me both physically and mentally. However, I could not tell my husband this fact. I didn't want to worry him, of course. But more than that, I was afraid of retaliation from my mother-in-law. I managed to give birth to a healthy baby girl despite my daily battles with anxiety. In fact, she was so lovely that I did not care about my mother-in-law's words when I gave birth to her. On this day, one month later, my husband was driving me to my in-law's house. There was only one reason, to show them my daughter. My brother-in-law and his wife and Billy would also be there today. I was afraid of what my mother-in-law would say, but I was looking forward to see my father-in-law and my brother-in-law's family for the first time in a while, more than anything else. But when we arrived at my in-law's house, I found it difficult to walk to the garage. I wondered what my mother-in-law would say to me again. If it was just me, it's fine, but if she hurt my daughter too as she grew up? Couldn't stop thinking about that. However, what had come to pass had been done. I head for my in-law's house begrudgingly. Fortunately, it was my brother-in-law, not my mother-in-law, who greeted us. My brother-in-law and his family had also arrived about 30 minutes earlier, and my in-laws were playing with Billy in the living room. When my mother-in-law saw me, she glared at my daughter. Then, as if sensing something, my daughter started to break down. I don't know what happened. I had given her milk in the car earlier, and she had been sleeping when I arrived. My husband wondered what was wrong, but my father-in-law tried to reassure us by saying, it's just that she's in a different place than usual. I tried my best to soothe her, but she just wouldn't stop crying. 
My mother-in-law sighed loudly and looked at me in annoyance. And as she walked by me, she mumbled, This is what girls are no good. At that moment, I felt a surge of anger that I had never felt before. No matter how much I loved her son, I just couldn't forgive her for this comment. What the hell was wrong with her? Why does it matter what sex she is? What is that attitude when your grandchild is born safe and sound? Enough already. I'll never show my face here again. I just need to endure this for one day, I thought, trying desperately to suppress my resentment. Then, I know why the baby's crying. Billy, who had been happily playing with his toys, suddenly said something like that. I immediately looked at my brother-in-law and exchanged eye contact. I thought to myself, maybe he's activating his power. My brother-in-law casually asked, Do you know why the baby's crying? Billy confidently opened his mouth. She's crying because she feels sorry for Auntie. My husband was the first to react to his words. Billy, what do you mean? Is that what the baby is saying? Yep. The baby is telling Grandma to stop bullying her mom. At the mention of the word bullying, everyone in the room turned to look at my mother-in-law. And then my mother-in-law started shaking, and then said in a muffled voice, What's wrong with this child? It was so weird. Billy continued without caring about the situation. Grandma has been being mean to Auntie for a long time. And that baby had known it from the time she was in her belly, and that she had always hated it. My husband responded to Billy's lurch with a straight face. Billy, is that true? Yes, it's true. The baby says she couldn't even tell her daddy because he's too nice to her. The baby is saying, Daddy, please help mommy. I see. Thank you. Billy, you made me finally realize it too. My husband stroked Billy's head and gave him a gentle smile. Then he turned his head back to his mother and his expression changed to that of a demon. He could hear his mother's voice, but he didn't care and started to yell at her. Mom, is it true what Billy just said? And no, it's not true. I don't know anything about that. You're insane to believe anything a child says. I'm going to ask Willow for the facts right here and now, okay? Of course it's okay. Willow knows the truth. I've never been mean to you, have I? My mother-in-law drags her face and makes eye contact with me as if she's trying to get me to cover for her. I realized for a moment that I was intimidated, but at the same time, all the times my mother-in-law had sneered at me came rushing back to me. If there was ever a time to admit everything, I thought it was now. I looked my husband straight in the eye and said, Ken, I'm sorry to tell you before. Your mother has been bullying me ever since we got married. I knew it. But I was afraid of what she would do to me if I told you. Thank you for telling me. I'm sorry I didn't notice. I shook my head and my husband hugged me and my daughter. Then he turned to my mother-in-law and said something I've never heard him say before. How dare you do this to someone I care about? I didn't think you were that much of a jerk. I'm disappointed. I don't even consider you a mother anymore. I want you to stay the hell out of my life. N no Please, Ken, it's not what you think. This is a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? Why would Willow lie about this? I know for a fact that you've been bullying Willow. You should be ashamed of yourself as a mother. You knew that if you did that, your family would be disgusted with you. Because Willow took you from me, and because the baby wasn't a boy, so I did it for you. For me? If that's what you think, then don't ever get involved with us again. My life will be ruined because of you, Mom. And what's wrong with your grandchild being a girl? Don't force your selfish desires on me. Ken, please listen to me. I don't want Willow to feel any worse. If it's between you and Willow, I'll take Willow over you any day. I'm not going to continue a family with a piece of shit like you. I'm cutting you out of my life forever. Ken, no, don't say that. Don't say that. My mother-in-law sobbed and clung to my husband's feet. He looked at her with disdain. After that, my husband declared that he would cut ties with his mother, just as he had said. In response, my father-in-law and brother-in-law also announced that they would sever ties with my mother-in-law. 
My father-in-law forced my mother-in-law to divorce him and kicked her out of the family home. My mother-in-law had no money and nowhere to go, so she had no choice but to go back to her parents' house. However, my mother-in-law, who can barely make ends meet, is now treated like a housekeeper. It's the best ending she could have deserved. Karmic retribution. She should suffer at best until the day she admits her wrongs. We, on the other hand, still visit my father-in-law and brother-in-law and their families. Billy's magical power seemed to be diminishing by the day, and these days he almost never speaks of them. They say that babies and animals can see what adults can't see, but it may not be true. Even if what Billy has said so far is just a coincidence, it is true that his words have saved my life. I am now living a happy life thanks to Billy without a doubt. I hope one day to tell my daughter about his magical power.